Okay, class. This is Dr. Severin. We'll be talking about physical activity for health promotion. This is an area and a topic that's of particular interest to, my, of, to myself, as well as really anyone in healthcare or in health sciences or exercise sciences, um, or really even policymakers. This is one of the bigger problems facing society in the United States and really around the world too, um, as we'll see in a bit here. So the objectives for this lecture is we'll discuss the implications of physical inactivity on health as a broad construct. We'll highlight potential barriers and facilitators to physical activity, like why people tend to be, or what factors may influence someone's ability to be more or less active. And they'll go over some basic strategies to promote physical activity. What can we do at a very basic level to get people moving more? So before we dive in, we'll cover some key terms here. So physical activity encompasses any bodily movement that requires uh, you know, muscle activity, right? It requires energy expenditure of some kind. This could include playing, exercise, working, active transportation, like walking to work or walking around the office, house chores like cleaning the floors or mopping the floors, the Sunday chores your parents maybe had you do, recreational activities, right? These all count. Exercise is a form of physical activity. It's a planned, structured, repetitive, and purposeful type of activity with the goal of improving some domain of physical fitness or physical performance, right? So you may see people use these interchangeably, but they are slightly different terms. Physical activity encompasses everything. Exercise is a specific type of physical activity, right? So exercise can count to your weekly physical activity, um, physical activity doesn't necessarily count for exercise, or they're not exactly the same thing. It's one of those squares and rectangle relationships. Um, however, no matter how we break it down, the vast majority of people in the United States are not active, right? So 80% uh, of adults do not meet the recommendations for aerobic and muscle strengthening activity. And those are 150 minutes uh, per week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. We'll get into what that means in a bit. Uh, per week are 75 minutes of vigorous. Again, we'll, we'll get into intensities in a bit. And then two, two days per week of strengthening exercises, right? The vast majority of people do not meet those recommendations. 52% or so meet the aerobic exercise recommendations, um, and about 30% meet the recommendations for strengthening. So about half of people meet that about 150 minutes per week. And then um, about a third of people meet what we should see for strengthening activities. Um, however, what, what's probably concerning, and we'll get into this in a bit, is that you know, we've seen some improvements in the participation rates in activity, uh, regarding activity. However, we haven't seen wholesale, like the needle hasn't moved that, that much. Um, if we look at plots over, you know, from year 2000 to more recent data, you know, we've seen an improvement, right? If we look at total activity from about 15 or so percent to about, again, 20 percent, again, depending on the survey that we utilize. Um, however, the vast majority of people are still inactive. Um, and we think, you know, a lot of the driver for these improvements were probably due to that, that aerobic exercise muscle strengthening has stayed pretty much flat over the past, you know, 10 or so years. Um, so we've made a lot of efforts to try to promote it. We've seen some improvements, but again, the vast majority of people remain inactive, right? And we see disparities too amongst particular um, age groups, right? Um, or demographics. So we see it, you know, in, um, in men versus women, Right, we see disparities, or maybe some social stigma. We'll unpack some of those things as well. We see difference amongst uh, uh, different ethnic groups as well as age groups, where older individuals are the least likely to be active. And why this is concerning, right? If we look at this map from the CDC, which which plots the physical inactivity rate across a uh, across different counties. Um, this looks almost identical, right, to the maps that we see for obesity, for diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, cardiovascular disease. We can go down the list. Physical activity is, is crucial, right, for, for reducing or potentially preventing uh, the risk of a, of a myriad of chronic diseases that are really taxing and overburdening our healthcare system. And I think physical activity is a major contributor to it. And we'll get into what may lead to these percentages that we're seeing that are really kind of um, 
um, getting you know out of hand in a certain degree. And we'll get into again things that we can potentially mitigate um, and, and and factors that may have led to this uh, current situation. What's especially concerning is what we're seeing in kids. Fitness in children has declined by about 2.2% per decade from about 1981 um, onwards. Less than three in 10 high schoolers get the recommended 60 minutes of activity. Um, and we're finding that kids now spend about seven and a half hours in front of the screen, right? That's a big, 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 big concern. Um, because we'll, as we'll get into later on, like your activity habits developed during childhood um, and adolescence translate to what they are often in adulthood. Right? And there's good evidence to support this. Uh, this graph here, um, you've probably seen this figure um, shared around social media, looking at um, activity or fitness levels, which is a surrogate measure of activity amongst uh, 50 nations. The United States fell in 47th out of 50 countries, right? So third from last. Um, you know, obviously this is a, it was a systematic review. They pulled data from a, a multitude of different studies, but either way, it hopefully illustrates this point that this is a big problem in adulthood. It's a, probably an even bigger problem in, in kids because those kids will often become inactive adults. So there are social forces at play here, economic forces at play here, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully unpack them. So you'll see this. A uh, cartoon that's probably been shared around. Um, you know, this, I remember when he used to carry a steps carrying a, a chair. Uh, it's a big problem, right? Because um, we know, as we'll cover in the next section, uh, the physical activity and this relationship of mortality is pretty profound. Um, and uh, not even just mortality, but a lot of other conditions, um, such as heart disease, obesity, and maybe even certain cancers. So uh, we'll end here, and then we'll get into the benefits of physical activity.